Hello and welcome to the third sub pool. We uh, are just going to go ahead and get this one kicked off. Up first we have Sample Chrome up against uh, Hadron Team. Uh, Hadron Team is Hadron Zodiac. He uh, is just going with a different name now. I'm not really sure why. But um, right here we've got this thing using a couple rail guns, some plasmas, relying on shields. It's overall very fragile, I think. Uh, especially if you can get right down the center, I, I think it's it's going to have some problems. And this one has a couple of antimatter cannons, so it'll hopefully keep its distance. But at the same time, much the same, the uh, the center is a bit of a vulnerable point. We've got some torpedo launchers and the little guys here, and you can see there are a couple little designs for these. This one has a an extra thruster instead of a torpedo. On the other side, though. We've got the Pork Chop Express by Sumplecrumb, which has some melee spikes on the front and uh, annihilators kind of just spaced throughout it. And with the spaced armor, it should be rather durable. And they're pretty fast, too. So let's see how this goes. The, the ships from Sumple are going to have pretty good ramming potency in addition to... Oh, wow. I did not even notice that Hadron had... Uh, Asteroid thrusters that you're not supposed to have. Um, another thing Sumple is bringing is the gauze beams, which are really good at dealing with uh, things that are trying to run away. Ah, fuck. And yeah, I, I did not even notice that those things had asteroid thrusters when I was verifying them. I don't know how I missed that. That's uh, that's pretty bad. But uh, you can see Simple Crumb off to a really good round two start as well. I think we can pretty confidently say Simple's got this fight in the bag. The gauze beams are actually very good at dealing with kiters and shielded ships. They hit pretty hard and at rather good ranges. And Sumple wins the first one. Up next we have Armor for 18 up against Sumple Crumb. Armor for 18 is bringing his his pocket uh, his pocket snails this time around. Got a couple plasma cannons, lasers all over the place, as is the Armor for style with the antenna. Because the snails gotta be able to find their target. But yeah, in this matchup, I feel like overall Sample probably has the advantage. He he's got. I think durability goes in favor of Armor Fur, but Sample I think has considerably more overall damage output. Though that said, uh, Armor Fur's fleets are generally simple looking, but do a, a fantastic job, and this could be no exception. We'll see.
It's a pretty straightforward brawling match between these two, and it does look like Crumb's got the, the advantage, at least in the first round. And his ships are dark, so it's kind of hard to tell. But they're really not even that banged up. E even the ones that have been largely surrounded for a while are still in pretty good condition. Seems pretty... Uh, Seems pretty plausible that Sample will be taking round one and two. That extra durable Sentinel armor really paying dividends. And to anyone who complained about melee spikes, I would like to highlight what just happened as simple shifts just drove through two of armor first. And as we can see, round one is certainly, or uh, round two is also looking fairly certain in favor of Simple Chrome. Sentinel armor is just too damn strong. And next up we have Sumpelkrum up against Debris. Now Debris is bringing a Tinkro fleet uh, with his main craft looking something like this, which I forget what firing pattern this ended up having, but uh, overall these guys are pretty maneuverable and they use a good bit of recoil survivability. Then we've got his drone distractor here, which, you know, simple, straightforward design. But he's also bringing the spacers with a little cannon on the tip and in an effort to create maneuvering room, which, as you can see, has worked phenomenally well. The, the fleet for debris is spaced all over the place. And of course, Debris has the range advantage and maneuverability here, but those, those Gauss beams could be a problem for him, depending on what the AI decides to do. Uh, simple ships don't turn terribly well, 
So it could take them a little while to get the beams on target, but that's not necessarily bad since they're a charging weapon. Uh, the cones are the the main ships. The the bones are the sticks. The con the drones are the drone ships, and the cones are the main ships because they have kind of like a cone of fire. Well, bones, drones, and cones kind of works too. Uh, you're you're going by increasing cost of the ship instead. But at the very least, it does seem that round one is going to go in favor of Sample. Or of, uh, sorry, Debris. Sample Sweet having a very difficult time applying any damage to all these kiters. And debris takes round one. The ship's from Sample holding up very well the incoming fire, but debris just having too much range and too much damage output. And you can see here in round two, Debris is building up a pretty solid point lead. And Super Hex's physics wiggle was pretty amazing. Although I still think my favorite moment was the... Uh, was it, oh, I forget what it was, it was like... The Sunbreaker, or whatever it was, from the one faction with the modular cannon.
and Debris takes the match. So next up we have Sumple against Toxico. And Toxico's fleet, this is called the John Battle Cruiser or something like that. And it's got its little escorts. Worth noting that the purple armor here is the actual Sentinel armor. And the other stuff, or the, the whiter armor is their uh, regular hull pieces. So the rest, like these larger escorts, are actually fairly flimsy by Sentinel standards. And these guys are very small. It looks like he's using uh, a lot of the farmer or a lot of the sentinel missiles, which I don't give a whole lot of. I don't put a whole lot of stock in the sentinel missiles. I think overall, actually, Sumplecrum has the advantage here, both in terms of durability and overall damage output. And Simple takes the match. Or the first round, rather. And he's probably going to take the match, too. But in brawler on brawler fights, there are only so many variables. I'm kind of wondering what Sumple's other ship is doing. Oh, that's right. Sumple doesn't have any reverse thrust, so it's trying to figure out how to maneuver, and it can't. But Sumple takes the, the match there. So next up we have Hadron team up against Armor for Zodiac or Armor for Ugh. I'm getting words confused. But uh, I feel like Armor for has quite a bit of an advantage here. Hadron ships are faster, but Armor has got uh, certainly has a health advantage and possibly also a damage advantage. The The big problem Armifer is going to have is actually applying all of his damage because there's only a finite amount of space surrounding a ship.
and I'm for takes round one. Yeah, I do like the way hydrogen ships look, but there are some some structural vulnerabilities on them. And they're overall very expensive. And expensive ships with vulnerabilities isn't usually a good combo. And up next we have Hadron up against Debris. I feel like Debris has every advantage here as well. Hadron is... His ships are pretty flimsy. And intending to fight at range, I believe. Which is the Tinkerel Playground. And with how round one went, I can't imagine round two is going to go too much better for Hadron. Tinkle are just super good at long range, high damage combat, and uh, Hadron's trying to compete with them in their arena. It's not a good way to be. Yeah, I don't know how I missed it. I think. It had to have just been that they were kind of small to begin with. But that said, that does mean that I'm just not paying as attention, or not even kind of paying attention. But up next we have Hadron up against Toxico. And I feel like this one's going to go in Toxico's favor. Hadron ships, despite being long range, have shown some disrespect behavior. And against Sentinel's disrespect behavior is a good way to die. Yeah, the, the thing about the format change is that only first place gets promoted to the uh, champion bracket. If there's a tie for first, then all ties go through, but it's no longer a first and second thing.
And John takes round one. Imagine round two is going to go very similar. Though with all three of Hadron ships focusing on the the flagship, that might go better for Hadron. That's going to be about the only way I think Hadron's fleet's going to be able to put out the damage to win this. And one of Hadron's ships got distracted, and that's probably it for Hadron's fleet in this fight. I may let two through though. I don't know. Might as well. One of the big things about the double elimination bracket is that adding additional contestants doesn't add nearly as much time as it does with a pool. And Toxico takes the match. Yeah, and the rules it said only the top place. So now we have Armor for 18 against Debris. And here, Debris is certainly going to have the mobility advantage, but I don't think he, I'm not entirely sure he's going to be able to deal enough damage to kill Armor for his ships before Debris runs out of space to maneuver. And then Debris would just get pinched on the wall. Which, of course, for Tinkerel is a very, very bad environment. Well, the, uh, the idea was for there to be something like six sub pools and have the top person from each sub pool uh, get go to the the champion bracket and you know making it more tie friendly so that you know tiebreakers were no longer ever had to be arbitrary because in the event of a three-way tie where each of them beat the other one once and lost, or won one and lost one, then tiebreaker becomes very arbitrary. And uh, by using the bracket instead, I could just send everyone through. The, the big problem with pools, of course, is once you get to about eight, you're looking at like a three or four hour pool. And that's that's just too much. I was not expecting though three different or two different three way ties for first. That's a little much. But it does make me glad that I'm not uh, doing a uh, I don't have to worry about figuring out who does and who doesn't advance. Uh, the, the bracket also means there will never be a tiebreaker for who won the tournament because you can't have a tie there at all. But keeping all the sub pools still allows everyone to see their fleet fight at least a few times. So at least there's that, right?
bones, scones, and the cult of Jim Jones. Well, I don't even know that pool is best for the spectators either. Because, uh, you end up seeing the same fleet, like, like 10 or 15 times. And if it's not a particularly interesting fleet to watch. Yeah. I think Debris' ships are doing too good of a job of applying damage. You can see Yomifer having a difficult time catching them, of course, but Debris is actually managing to kill some from time to time. Although with all of his ships spaced out, Debris is doing much less effective. Uh, yeah, Debris' main ship used to look a lot more like Duke Slayer's. Armorfer did take round two, though. So, uh... There's still hope for you yet, Simple. The points are actually staying pretty close though. I think I... As is typically the case with kiters, all it takes is one or two ships to misbehave for a second or two and the whole fight changes. But... I... Yeah, um, I think Debris got this one.
And next up, Armor Fur up against Toxica. Um, here I'm not sure. Toxico may actually be able to do work in this engagement. Because Armor Fur can only have so many ships at a time focus on the, the cruiser. But the cruiser should be able to cut through them with a reasonable quickness. Armor Fur's standard pattern involves being more durable than dangerous and winning by mass rather than being murderous but I'm feeling like this fleet has a little low damage even by armifers usual metrics Hey, FGD. And the AI kind of derping out. And it could be shooting things, but instead it's just going to not. I mean, why would you want to kill the enemy when you could just not do that? And yeah, uh, I think that is an insurmountable point gap for John to have to cover. And Harford takes round one. Yeah, the, it stopped shooting because there was wreckage in the way, and then the AI decided it wanted to wait for the wreckage to clear rather than shooting something it had a clear line of fire on. But, you know, it was waiting on the wreckage to clear rather than just clearing it itself, which would have solved the problem too, but... Instead, I just wanted to wait. Infinitely patient. And yeah, the... I feel like the flurry missile ships are more expensive than their contribution justifies. But that's just flurry missiles in general. Outside a few niche cases, I don't think they're overly useful weapons.
And yeah, this looks like uh, we're going to see basically what we saw last time where the score and the time. You know, where uh, is it the score and the time are the greatest foes? But now we have debris up against Toxico. And here, I feel like Debris also has the advantage. Provided his ships are smart enough to not get themselves Ginsued, the, the Tinkle ships have a dramatic range and damage advantage. It's just a matter of not getting too close. As long as they keep their distance, they'll be fine. And that does seem to be what they're doing for the most part. Yes, Luth. The the darker colored pieces are the actual armor plating. The lighter ones, I think, are core hull. Yeah. the The big problem with flurry missiles is that they don't really do any damage. Their range isn't that great compared to other missiles, and they're they're very expensive. Like all in all, I'm just not fond of flurry missiles as a weapon. And debris takes round one. And uh, I would be pretty surprised if debris didn't end up taking round two as well.
You don't really even need flurries to occupy PD to get nukes to go through. Most weapons used for point defense, if they kill the nuke as soon as it's in range, it will still blow up the ship. You just let them go. They don't need help. And, uh, there you have it. Here's pool three. So I uh, hope you enjoyed and have a good one.